Hey guys, I'm Josie and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So I'm going to carry on from the MotoGP video that I did a couple of weeks ago with um, Moto2 and it is my top three for 2019 and also the three that I'm going to keep an eye on. So in at number one, I have Brad Binder. Personally, I believe that Brad Binder has been massively overlooked when it comes to the Moto2 field. I mean, last year the hype was all about Peko and Oliveira and their title battle, that no one really paid attention to the man that was in third position in the championship, which was Brad Binder. I mean, it's not like he got there on a fluke. He had three wins, he had one pole position, he had numerous top tens. He actually had 13 top ten finishes. And he only didn't finish two races within that season. And keeping in mind that this is only this was only his second year within the Moto Two grid, it is completely phenomenal what he has achieved. But looking back at his seasons season in Moto Two in two thousand and seventeen, his rookie season, he did also get within the top ten in the standings, where he finished eighth overall. And for a rookie. That's pretty damn impressive. Before that, he was crowned Moto3 World Champion, and rightly so. But personally, I believe that Brad is just going to get on with it. He's going to put his head down, he's going to crack out the wins, he's going to crack out the podiums, and fingers crossed, I am hoping for Brad to be number one come Valencia. Next up I have Luca Marini in the second position. So Luca Marini didn't have the best of starts to 2018. He seemed to lack confidence in himself and his bike and just he just seemed to generally be lacking any confidence when it came to racing. But come the middle of the season there was talk of that infamous pep talk with Valle and then all of a sudden he's just a new man. It's like something just went in his brain and he's like, yeah, I can do this. But second half of 2018 was spectacular. He had that amazing first win in Sepang. He didn't, he took his maiden pole and then another? Like, <laughs> is one not good enough for you, Luca? You gotta, gotta just prove us, prove us all wrong. Not just that, he had two second place finishes and he also had two third place finishes. I mean, a handful of podiums is pretty good stuff, especially when you have struggled so badly within the first half of the year. Unfortunately, he did also have four DNFs, but he did manage to finish within the top 10 on five, five other occasions, which is also good going for someone that has struggled so badly. If you look back on his previous seasons in the Moto2 grid, he has come, across, come along leaps and bounds. 2016 he was in 23rd position at the end of the year and then in 2017 he was 15th. So when he's managed to finish 7th in 2018 it is completely and utterly amazing. So props to you Luca. Props to you, you did absolutely brilliantly the second half of 2018 and I am fully expecting him to come into 2019 with this new lease of life, this new confidence in himself and confidence in the bike and the team and I am fully expecting him to be up there. I am expecting more Luca Marini celebrations podiums, pole positions, whatever I'm expecting. I'm expecting more from Luca and I'm really looking forward to seeing what he can do this year. Last on my list is Alex Marquez. So 2018 was not Marquez's best season. He didn't manage to have any wins, but he did come away with two second places and four third places, as well as three poles, which ended up being um, fourth, which ended up landing him fourth in the standings. Not where he wanted to be. Obviously, he would have loved to have taken this the world championship title like people were rumouring were rumouring but people were speculating he was going to be world champion this year but unfortunately that, that rumour has been battled around for about two years now so it just didn't he didn't seem to really have the confidence in himself or in the bike last year and 
he was putting in such an amazing performance for the majority of races but then he'd get so far through and it would just go down the drain, he'd crash, something would happen, it was just so unfortunate for Alex. But he shows so much potential, when he's doing well, he's doing well. This is the second year that he's finished in fourth position so hopefully he can only go on to improve this year. Unfortunately only time will tell. I really do rate Alex. It sounds it sounds like I'm criticising him but I do think Alex is such a good rider. I do think that having a brother who is a seven time world champion is going to take its toll on your confidence. I mean he's having to watch him go out and dominate and just rack up the wins and the pole positions and it must take a little bit of toll on your psyche. So I do think that that may have played, played a little bit of, a little bit, it may have had a little bit of effect on Alex but who knows. All I know is I am really hoping that Alex can just put his head down and get on with it and deliver some wins this year because we're not seeing we're not seeing the true Alex potential here. We didn't see the true Alex potential last year. Fingers crossed. Moving on to my three to watch for 2019. I'm obviously going to have to start with reigning world, reigning Moto3 world champion, which is Jorge Martin. So Martin did get the nickname of pole man in 2018 when he took 11 pole positions. That's 11 T-Sort watches. What would you do with that many watches? I will never know. But anyway, he also amassed seven wins, two second places and one third place. The time he didn't get a decent position was when he managed to finish outside of the top ten, which was once, and the four DNFs that he had, which were very, very rarely his fault. I think that he is going to cause a little bit of upset within the more true field. Unfortunately, during the first part of testing at the back end of last year, he did manage to fracture the third metatarsal, his fifth toe, his left humerus, and I think that's it. Yes, I think that's all the fractures. But he seems to be healing pretty well, so we will see what he can do. It took me a lot to actually read that there because I was like, he can't have done that much to himself. But then I realised that, yes, he's made of strong stuff, it's Jorge. Second on my watch list is Xavi Vieri. I've put Xavi on here simply because I want to see what he can do on that Mark VDS machine. I really look forward to this because Mia did all right. Alex seems to adapt, but Alex seems to take to the bike a lot better. Mia struggled and I'm really looking forward to see if this is a better fit for Xavi compared to some of his previous bikes. So last year he didn't really have the best of seasons. He had an all right season in all fairness. He was 11th in the championship. He had two podium appearances, one in second and one in third, and he also had a pole position. So it's not like it was disastrous, but it's not the best. However, 11th position was exactly where he was in 2017, so it can only improve from here, I'm hoping. Especially since Mark VDS tend to be one of the top heavy hitters when it comes to the championship. So we'll see. But I am looking forward to seeing what Chavi can do. I loved when they just changed, like when they completely changed bikes and they moved to someone that maybe is a bit of a better fit for them team wise and or just bike wise. Because I think that as long as you have a good fit with a team or even just a good fit on a bike, you can do some amazing things. So hopefully that is what Chavi needs. But we will see, only time will tell. Third on my list is Jake Dixon. So Jake Dixon is obviously never is just a newbie to 
Mortal 2, it's not even come from Mortal 3, so this is going to be very interesting. He has moved from BSB, he was second in the championship, he had three wins, six second places and seven thirds. So this could be a recipe for disaster for the rest of the field or Dixon. I'm hoping it's the rest of the field rather than Jake. He's done all right in testing, so I am hoping for the best, but I like Jake. He's fast, he's charismatic, he's funny, he doesn't really care what anyone else thinks about him, and he gets on really well with his team and his teammates and just the general grid. He's just Jake is what we need. Jake is Jake is nice. Jake is lovely. And I'm really looking forward to what he can do on the bike. If it's his BSB performances are anything to go by, then he's quite obviously fast. He's driven. So I am looking forward to it. And that hence why he's on my watch list. I like Jake, and it's not just because he's a fellow Brit, it's because so many things. I have so many reasons to have each of these on my list. Like Vier, he I also think he is lovely. Martine, I think is just incredible in general. And Jake, I think, is crazy. I think he's I think he's great. And that's why I'm really looking forward to it, because I do think that he can cause some upset. I also have to give a special mention to this dude. Marco Bezzecki. I'm looking forward to seeing what all of the Moto3 rookies can do. And I say Moto3 rookies, I mean ones that have obviously moved up from Moto3. But Bezzecki I didn't put on my list simply because I'm, it's more to do with the bike that he's riding more than him but I have to give a special mention because I really hope he does well because I have a little soft, soft spot for Marco. He's one of my favorites. Anyway that is my list done for today. Really sorry that it was like so late but um, I was going to do it last week and then my brother randomly appeared and just decided to move back into the house for a week and I don't know if any of you have older or well, I don't know if any of you have siblings and you know how irritating it is when they just appear and he literally like just takes over the house he's so noisy and he just it's just so annoying so I can't do anything and then he just takes the mick so yeah Sorry that it's so late. Sorry that my lighting's a bit weird, but um, it's dark and I've had to change positions because where I normally film is also really dark and I can't get to lighten up. So now we are sitting on the bed with the cat. That's our ass. Just need to go the other way. Woo! The cat. Who's been hiding behind me the entire time. But <laughs> yes. Tell me down below who you are rooting for this year, who your top three are for Moto2 and who you want to see do well or who you think is going to really thrive this year. Not maybe in a, going to be in one of the top three positions but who you think is going to thrive so obviously I'm hoping Marco does, we'll see. Tell me down below in the comments, give me a thumbs up on any videos you're enjoying and also follow me on my various social media which I will put in the box down below. If I say below one more time, you have permission to slap me. But for now, that is me done. I will have my Moto3 video up soon enough, once I have time. Unfortunately I have uh, recently changed jobs, I changed jobs at the start of February so I'm still getting used to all the shifts, doing night shifts and whatnot. It is really tiring. But anyway, for now, 